I'm Johnny Ray, and this is Four Addicts from Addicts, another episode of Four Addicts from Addicts, raw, real, unedited, unprepared testimonies of people who have gone through the struggles of addiction. This is also the first phase in 5R recovery. I must say right now, I absolutely love recovery, and it gives me an opportunity to be able to meet people and, and get to hear their stories of, of where they went with addiction and where they are now after they've beat addiction, uh, stories that can really captivate and help people. The, the, the story and the person is what matters. So I'd like to introduce to you a, a man I do not know. His name is Julius, and he has agreed to share a little bit of his story today. So Julius, take it away. Okay, so uh, before I begin anything, I'm going to bring this closer to me. All See, right. that's what I want. I want you close to me, <laughs> right? Because nice. this is what addiction has done to me. It took things away from me. Okay. It took... Um, I'm going to say the first thing it took was time. Okay. It took a lot of time out of my life. Mm -hmm. With taking that time out of my life, uh, it took my children away from me. Um, it took family away from me. Mm -hmm. It took opportunities um, that I won't say I won't get back, but opportunities that I let slip through my hands. Right? Yeah. Um, so... I think coming out of the womb, I've always had an addictive behavior. Like, um, I always wanted stuff. Stuff is, to, to this day, is my biggest, still my biggest addition. I, I, I want stuff. I like things that look good, and, and I like to impress. Now, it's okay to impress when you're, whatever your motive and your angle is. So my motive and angle in school started off in an addictive behavior, which was not good. I wanted to fit in. So before I took the first, pass that, right? Before I took the first drink, um, there were some situations going on with me, right? And they got this thing called reservations, right? You, 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 you hold yes. stuff in, pressure burst pipes. So most stuff you stuff, right? It, it gets full and, and it's gonna explode. So let's smash, stop and rewind. Um, I wanted to fit in in school. Born in the projects of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I always felt that people would look at me in a different way if I had things. Because the people that had things at that time, everybody adored, right? They flocked to them. They gave them more attention. And they was the star, right? I always wanted to be a star, right? So I did things my behavior became, put me in a bad situation, right? My behavior. So getting in trouble in school, running with the wrong crowd, and there was drugs, there was alcohol, right? And my mom didn't raise me that way. Uh, even though I was born in the projects, raised in the projects, um, you know, inside my mom's home was a home, right? And she taught me, uh, she taught me discipline. She taught me how to respect myself and respect others. But the people that I was trying to impress, uh, it was a different vibe, you know? Um, find a sucker and get over on them. Always trying to hit a lick. Always hustle. Always hustle. You, Always. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Always hustle, 24-7. Yep. And I did that. And now my hustle was, at, at that time, um, being two different people. Because when I was at home, I was the church boy. You know what I mean? Y'all yeah. see me with my collar on right now? Yeah, that's how I was. I was, I was church boy <laughs> swag at home, nice. right? And then when I when I got out um, of my mom's face, then I would, you know, I, I would be a Superman, you know? I would take off the church boy uh, shirt, right? And, and with the clothes became another person, right? Mm -hmm. So just like Superman, when he gets in the booth, he becomes another person, right? When Clark he puts, Kent. He, Clark Kent, Clark to, Kent Superman. to Superman. So, <laughs> right, right now we we're, we're doing it wrong. So, when I when I when I came up out those clothes, you know what I mean? Now I'm a different guy. You are a different guy. You feel me? I'm a, I'm a different guy now. Yeah. You know, and 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 like I said, with the clothes became the behavior. Mm -hmm. So now I, I I sit a certain way. Man, man, let me hit that motherfucking weed, man. You feel me? Uh, shit. Baby, you got another drink or no? 
<laughs> you, you know, that type of situation, right? Yeah. And because this was the norm, we 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 got high to, till we passed out. We got drunk till, till, till we blacked out. So doing that over time, I picked up an addiction. Yeah. Now, now I'm going to let you know this too. I loved it. Whoo. If I can get high right now without the consequences, I'll be high right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so true. You make me feel good. So true. Yep. And I love who I am when I'm on the drink, you know, sitting in the club. Hey, turning up. Hey, yo, 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 yo. Right. So I, I that and I fell in love with that character because everywhere I went, that person became the star. I was a star. No matter where I went, I was a star. Literally, people were asking me for my autograph. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then, an addictive behavior took over me, right? Where I needed, being honest, I needed drugs just to, to eat. Yep. I needed drugs to go to sleep. Yep. I needed drugs to be with my woman. Like, she'd be calling me, baby, you call, you call special time with me. Uh, you got some weed? <laughs> you, you feel me? You, you, you got something to drink, you know? And I even needed drugs to cope with my children. Like, my my kids would be around me playing, and they just be bugging me out. And I'm like, man, I need some dope. I need I need, I, I need some weed. I need some I need some milk. I, need, I, I needed drugs at all costs to even maintain, even maintain the simplest things in life. The things that... I just do, right? I needed drugs to breathe. Yeah. Right? Now, made a lot of money. Made a lot of money selling a lot of drugs. And I became my best customer. Yes. I became <laughs> my very best customer. Yeah. You know, and everybody that I used to sell dope to, was the people that I got high with. You know what I mean? And I was an in the closet smoker. It was crack cocaine for me. Crack cocaine was the first drug that made me, you know what I mean? I mean, I I, I, I hit that crack, man, and it was like, ping, you know, that, that, that ear ringing shit. Yeah. And man, and it's funny that I paid a lot of money to close myself up in the house and peep out of windows. Yeah, dude, love looking through people. You know what the fuck? Right? You know, you know, you know, I, dude, it came hand in hand. Totally. For, for, for hours. hours. But no. And it was interesting. Days. That was TV. Days for me. For days. Stuck in the crack house. You know? And and, and so, I, um... Now, once that addiction took hold, because I, I don't want to... What I don't want to do on this film is paint a pretty picture no. of, of, not. Of, of all the clubs I went to, all the cities I parted in, all the times I was in the casino, you know what I'm saying? Just the script club. Like I told you, I'm from the ATL, so, you know, we script club live around now, you know, throwing money in the air, man, you know what I mean? They call it euphoric, not to mean to interrupt you, they call Yo, it euphoric recall. The euphoric, euphoric recall tries to make it a a happy situation out of our previous experiences, but that's not what 5R is. 5R encourages to to reminisce on the, our past mm -hmm. and go over our past, the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. We rejoice over the good and we recover from the bad. So keep going. Sir. You know, somebody told me, I think I was in Philly. They told me, they said, you won't change until you, until you hate the person that you become. Wow. Yeah. You got to hate it. Love that. You got to be angry at that guy. Like I'm looking at this guy, like this is my reflection right now. See me, <laughs> right? I, I, that guy with that teeth, that white teeth, bang in my white teeth, bang in my. I hated that guy, for real. I, I, like I loved him, I created him. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And I hate, I hated the very thing that I had become, the very thing that I had behaved. Now, uh, we're gonna keep it real, right? Definitely. Right. So, I'm a black man in America. But I used to always say, yeah, you know, I'm that nigga. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I had one of my baby mamas tell me, do you know what a nigga is? A nigga run out on his kids. A nigga fuck his baby, his, his, his baby mama friends. Yeah. A nigga will go in his homeboy pocket while, while he sleep. Right. He curved. 
Oh, I'm finna get this nigga. I'm in his pockets. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. That's what a nigga do, right? Yeah. And, and 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 a nigga would steal from his own homeboy. I'm gonna tell you something else what a nigga would do. A nigga did me like this. <laughs> <laughs> I had a nigga in my house taking care of him, and him and one of my chicks at the time was going behind my back. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's that that right there, that's why even to this day I stick by one code. Man, I don't, I don't, I don't take from my people, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with my my, my people, damn girl. I don't, I don't do them like that because what she showed me was that, and I understand it. My mama didn't raise a nigga; she raised a man. So as you see in the beginning of this video, you seen that what I had on. That's my everyday attire today. Nice. You know what I mean? I I I I, I want to be that way because now that image that I I, I told you all that I wanted to. Uh, show my elementary school peer, peers. That's the image that I wanna want the world to see today when they see me. I, I shave. I don't, you know. I used to do the Rick Ross beard, right? And I I, 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 I shaved today because I want to show the image of someone that is clean and sober, yes. and that is working the steps, right? And I'm not not knocking nobody if you got a beard, but I'm just showing you my image because I'm gonna show you another image. My mama was in a wheelchair. Dying of cancer, man. I went in her purse and took her last rent, uh, took her rent money for some dope. All right, I used to steal my mama's car and don't come back for weeks yeah. for that dope. I remember my daughter, um, the Camelo Anthony. Camelo Anthony, uh, uh, came out and he had some Jordans, Jordan had sponsored him. And I bought me and my daughter the J's. Then so went home, but went to the got the J's, came, showed them to my baby girl. Ah oh, me and daddy got Jordan's delight, right? I went and took the the next day, that feeling, you know that report recall? Yeah. That phenomenon of craving <laughs> was so elusive that I could not fight it. Because at that point, I understand what they tell me. I was beyond human aid, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get into that too. The reason why I'm who I am today is because I surrendered my will to to a power greater than me, and and by surrendering, I admitted that I am powerless. See, all these times for all these years, I was in and out of rehabs, man. You know what I mean? Le leaving the leaving the rehab, going straight to the dope house. You feel me? Leaving the rehab, going straight back to the hood. Right. Leaving the rehab, going straight back to a woman that drinks and smoke weed and thinking that I'm going to, I'm going to change this time. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. This time Crazy. I'm in the rehab talking about, hey, yeah, yeah, it's cool. She smoked weed. That's good. Oh, she drank. That's good. I, I'm, I'm going to be good. And yes. it's a gateway. Yes. Now, the gateway is funny because it ain't just with weed and alcohol with me. My gateway can be music. There is no way that I need to be coming out of the rehab, driving my car, playing this song. Rolling down the street, smoking in dope, sipping on gin and juice, laid back with my mind on my money and my money on my mind. <laughs> and couldn't figure it's out. Good. It's a good song, but yeah, I agree with you 100%. That shit it's ain't good, good for a dope fiend <laughs> addict like me. I mean, no discredit to Snoop Dogg, of course not. Right, because not, let's get that obviously clear. Snoop Dogg know how to maintain <laughs> composure. Right, you know what I mean. He does. See, there's something in the AA book, and I probably won't quote it, but it says something like, um, "If you can drink, I'll hands off to you." Right, I can't. I can't. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You you you, you know, and yeah. I had to wreck. Thank Man, you, Shannon. <laughs> Shannon said it only would last for a little bit before it got out of control. Yeah, I remember the time when I used to can last, right? Meaning I would I, I, I would get sober, and it would take me a period of time before you saw the repercussions of my using. Right. Today, if I smoke some dope today, everything goes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. In two weeks. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Gone. Gone. And yep. I look like I've been out there for three years. Yeah. I'd be like, man, you see, you see, bro? 
<laughs> Man, he looked tall. He's like, it's only been two weeks. <laughs> yeah, it only been two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> mm, so funny. You know, um, I've tried everything under the sun to maintain composure of that person that I wanted to be, that I wanted you all to see. And I've tried every way to, maybe I won't smoke crack. <laughs> I try meth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, awesome. Maybe I won't drink. I smoke weed. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe it was her fault, right? Look, for <laughs> real, for real. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, men, you stop blaming your woman for your bullshit. Yep. Because... Is your if you know that she's not right for you because of the things that she's doing and you think you can control her and change her, then that's your fault. Hey, see, today people give me stuff. <laughs> it don't matter what it is. I don't right? know what it is. I, I, I don't know, but the, the baby came and gave. But that was a time when children didn't even come up to me. <laughs> they would look at me and be like, uh-uh. <laughs> Oh, uh, mommy, mommy. Now they're giving gifts. Now they're giving Whoa. gifts, whatever it is, right? So, and that's another thing. That's, that's another thing, right? Whatever you put into this, you're going to get out of it, right? Absolutely. Straight up. And that's right? with life, and that's that, with recovery. For real, for real, yes. right? Uh, so, they told me it, you have to, it has to be all or nothing. In the in the big book, it says either God, either God is everything, right, or yep. he's or he's nothing, or he's nothing, right. And so, you know, my my views of God was another situation. The only reason that I'm here right now is because I surrendered to something that I almost didn't believe in. Yep. But see, it was then he said, "Okay, now I'm gonna show you who I am, right? Now you're gonna hear me." And I thought hearing God was like hearing this, like like you know having a doubt. No, like. Sit by yourself long enough that you stay out of your own way. See, that was that's another problem. It's getting in the way. What I want to what I want to talk right now is straight up recovery. Right. All right. And they said that when one addict talks with another addict, magic appears. That's it. You know what I mean? And I think that's what he's doing right now because. Even though we're having this conversation and, and this is on video, somebody somewhere is going to understand exactly what I'm going through, yeah. right? Exactly. And, That's... And, and, right. And they're going to be like, man, I know what he's talking about. Yes. Right. But I, I want you to know what I'm talking about. And that's the recovery part of this. Right. That's why I'm spitting this. That We call it spitting game. Right. But game don't mean something bad because the boys on the court, they got game. Right, okay. you, you know when you when you go on the court, you got to show me what's what's your game like. You right. know what I mean. So I'm telling you what my game like today. You know, man, I'm in the game like EA Sports right now. You know, I'm, I'm this is game seven for me. No days off. Yep. Twenty four seven, three sixty five. Yep. I don't put myself in compromising positions. Yeah, I I, I see the homeboys. I pull up at the at, at, at the store. I see them. Right? And, hey, what's happening? Hey, bro, everything good? Yeah, okay. Man, I keep it moving. Because what <laughs> happens is if I stay there, I'm going to get in my way. Yeah. I'm going to get in my way. Then I'm going to let them get... First, I'm going to let them get in my way. Yeah. By letting them get in my way, I'm going to get out of... I'm going to get in my way. So when I when I choke the deuces at them and I keep it moving, that's me getting out the way. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's what you got to remain. You got to remain out of the way. Out of your own way. So when you talk, when you sit down and you saying, man, how did I do this again? Man, how did I do this again? Oh, I want to kill myself. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, fucked up everything <laughs> again, <laughs> you know, and, and, and you did that by getting in your way. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. You got in your way. Yeah. You get was out way. get out the way. <laughs> you know what I love about this? So 
Julius already knows what this whole video purpose is about. We've never met before. That's 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 just brilliant. That's what it's all. That's what it's all about. It's like testimonies of real people sharing their real stories to help other people share their stories. That's what mm -hmm. this four addicts from addicts is all about. So I want to I want to ask you. So what so what what means did you use to get clean? What did you what what did you do? I've been to rehab Have about. You been to jail? Oh yes. Yeah, so look, 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 look. yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing that happened to me was to go to jail. I was kicking and screaming. You know, right now we um this this history is in the making right now. Um so I think his name is George uh Floyd. Oh, what's going on right now? What's going yes. on? So y'all gonna be looking at this like, oh yeah, this is gonna be something in the past, right? But the George Floyd thing happened this week, right? Mm -hmm. And when when I seen George Floyd with the with the cop with, with the knee on his neck, right? It don't matter if it's black. I, don't, I know my, my, I know white boys that don't got they got the, the knee on their back, their neck, their feet on their head. So it, it's not a situation like just black and white. It just it's fucked up that yeah, we, we, black men are dying, right? Right. That's fucked up. But I'm just yeah. telling you, handcuffs saved my life. This right here, you, you know, this is how you got to sit in the back of the car. You, 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 you it, can't it, sit back. You can't sit back, right? You gotta be all so, freaking. So this right here, this right here saved my life. For real, for real. And I went kicking and screaming. Yep. Don't take me to jail. Right? But that was a bigger picture going on. You know, I because obviously with my hands free, I got in my way. Mm -hmm. So the creator of the universe. The stars, you know, the one that designed things. He put a plan in motion for me, right? And he said, but first of all, I got to do, I got to stop your hands and your feet from moving, right? So that's what happened. Just like this, right? And, 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 and here it is. What about my stuff? <laughs> Book bag full of, full of uh, tweaking shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, you know, that got, stuff matters that to stuff me. That stuff matters to me, right? <laughs> yeah, so you know, I, I, I got, I got stuff in, in, in people's hotel room. My stuff. Where's my stuff? My stuff. You know, I'm so worried about my stuff. But what happens is, when, once I got into jail, and I'm telling you, I, I went to jail numerous of times. But this is on that last attempt. That last attempt, it, I sat in a quiet space, right? And I became okay with what I saw the processes that was going that was about to happen, right? I knew because the court set it up that I had to go into a, uh, I, I was going into a rehab, and I've been there 150 times. Let me tell you, the Salvation Army. I don't know if y'all ever heard of the Salvation yep. Army Adult Rehabilitation Center. Saved my life on numerous occasions. I have been to about. I know I've been I've been in rehab. Probably anywhere from eight to fifteen times, for real, for real. Wow. My oldest is twenty-one years old. When she was in my my, which is my my ex-wife now, when she was in her her stomach, right? She when she was in the womb, I first checked in into the Salvation Army in the ATL in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been in Salvation Army in Miami, Florida. I've been in Salvation Army in Atlanta. I've been in Salvation Army in Portland, Oregon. I've been to Salvation Army here in Seattle, Washington, because that's where I'm at now. And I'm talking about countless of times, all right? So I didn't get this way overnight. Uh, that's why I, when I hear somebody fell off, I always think in my mind, they're one step closer. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not that they don't step back. No, nah, they, they, they're, they're one step closer. Yeah. If, if they choose to make that step, right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's suggested to you to take the, the necessary steps and to take the suggestions, to create a plan of action, right? When I hear that somebody don't got, oh yeah, he got cracked. And, and I, I don't look at it like, oh, he, he stepped back. He's one step closer, right, right, to where he was, to where God or the universe, right, whatever, the donut is going to allow him to be. Right. So. But you got to want it. You got to want it. Definitely. Right. And um, of course you want it. 
Every time I went to rehab, I wanted it. <laughs> I just didn't want to get out my way. Yep, I love the way you said that. Yep, I, I wanted it each and every time. I used to look in the hoods back back in like in Florida, right? The police would ride up on you and, and ask you, "Man, ain't you tired?" The police. I'm tired of locking you up for this petty shit. <laughs> ain't you tired? Cause I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> and I know you. I know you hot. I know you got a warrant on you, right? Cause I would have read your name. Right. You, you know what I mean? Cause we know you, man. I don't lock you up in this. You know, I'm in the hood. Yeah. So the, the police is that's in the hood. They know you cause they patrol the hood. They're like, hey, Julia, man, you know him. <laughs> oh, Sarge on Sarge on deck tonight, but y'all boy better tuck and run, cause you know he gonna have the boys out. Yeah. Police used to ride up on me. Maybe because he knew that I was different than the other people that I was running with. He didn't give them that chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was something in me that he saw that, bro, ain't you tired? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't this getting old? It's getting old. <laughs> then they'll say something like, go get some sleep, get off the street. I got a one and everything. Pistol on me, dope in my pocket. Uh-uh. A bubble, a crack pipe, all that. I got all that on me. Here you go. And go get some, some sleep. The police was tired of what locking me up. So <laughs> you got to get tired. Yep. So now what do you do now, now that you have been? And how long have you been clean? Um, I'm a year and a half. Nice. A little, a little over a year and a half now. Um, so this time, what had to happen? I had to be separated from anything and everybody that I knew. Hey, 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 no, please, please. She's no. making sure it's really clean underneath yep. this chair. <laughs> it's a good job though. She's Thank doing you. a good job. Thank really you. well done. Anyway, so that's so funny. So uh, the question again. Oh, so you're how many days you're clean? Okay. And and then now what are you doing now that you're in now that you're in recovery and, and helping others? Obviously this is going to help. I remain people. stuck. Okay. You better stick yourself to a program of action. I got stuck. Yeah. Now I didn't go back to the so everything had to be separated. Everybody look this time I, I didn't have I didn't have nobody to call on. When I went to jail I did not make one call. Yeah, I could have called. And, you know, hey, 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 bro, they, they got me. I'm, look, none of that. You remember I told you that I, I remained in this place of quietness? Yeah, yeah. Man, I got stuck. Everybody, the only time I moved was for count, food, or if I had to take a shit. There you go. That was it. <laughs> the rest of the time, I didn't look at TV. I didn't play no cards. I ain't play no dominoes. I didn't hit the gambling table. Dice. No dice. No zoom zooms or whatever. I didn't care about none of that. Yep. Man, I got stuck. Nice. Right. And 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 through that process, it's gonna it's, it's a process. It then when they when they let me out, I had to go to the rehab, and I been I done did the rehab like I say eighteen to fifteen times. I didn't get I didn't hang with. Anybody of my kind. Now, you know, you, they got this this sign, this saying where they say, we cut from the same cloth. Anybody from the cloth that I was cut from, I stayed away from. <laughs> Smart. For, for real. <laughs> like, like I, I, I don't, man, listen. I, 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 be, I hated that very thing I had became. I hated it. So when I went into rehab, for real, when you, if, if, if you listen to this and, you, and you're, you're struggling, and you're thinking about checking in because, first of all, I'm going to tell you, I can never get clean on my own. Yep. I always had to go into rehab or go into a situation where I was stuck in these four walls in order for me to, 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 to receive what was, what was trying to be given to me, right? So when I got into rehab, I hated it. I didn't hate that I was there. I began to love that I was in rehab. For real. I didn't want to go back out there in the streets. I didn't want that life anymore. So I had to go to rehab. I had to uh, get out my way. And this is it. I didn't care what those people gave me, whether they was, they was, they was clowning on me, if they was picking on me, if they was uh, 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 being unfair. You know how you got counselors and, and staff members that they, they, they in their feelings. 
You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Whatever is maybe some about me they don't like. Maybe she thinks I remind her of her ex boyfriend. I don't know. Right. <laughs> but I'm for real. I always home. said yeah. about this one chick that was there, man. I must remind you of somebody that, that did you wrong. You don't like I me. told her that. <laughs> like, for real. Because you don't like me, but I'm okay with that. Because whatever, what, listen, whatever they tell you to do, do it. Because it's only to sharpen you. They say iron sharpens iron. So the system sometimes is used to sharpen us. Okay? For real, for real. And that's how I looked at it. So I didn't care about the, the, the they had this thing called pink slips. You get a right, right up and then you get, uh, 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 you, you get in, you, you get, you, you know, you can't go out for the weekend or right. you, you get your phone privilege took from you. You got to put you on restrictions, restrictions and yeah. shit. I was trying to look for it. You see me struggling. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Yeah, I you got, got me, you. right? Totally so, uh, and, 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 and <laughs> I literally loved it. Look, this guy right here on the phone, he was in rehab with me. Now he is the assistant manager at the rehab we went to. Oh, now that is sweet. Hey, bro, yeah. guess what I'm doing right now? What? I'm that... doing a video live about recovery. Where are you at? Uh, now, listen, you're on speakerphone, so don't worry about where I'm at. You are on the video. Oh, you're man. on the video. <laughs> you are on the video right now. Okay, uh, that's fine. I'm trying to come to your house. Are you at home? Uh, go ahead. Ron is there. Okay, so listen, listen, I want you, listen, I want you to, like, if you can for like, if you got 30 seconds, you in this video with me, I just explained to them that me and you went through the rehab together, and now you are the assistant resident manager of the Salvation Army Adult uh, uh, Rehabilitation Program. What, what, what advice do you want to give to these people on the video? Well, who's the video for? Listen, what advice do you want? This a, right now? Yes, I told you that. You want to tell so I'm doing this thing called For Addicts, From Addicts. Real life, raw testimonies of people who have gone through the struggles of addiction who are willing to share their raw, unedited, unprepared stories to help other addicts in, in addiction. So that's where it is. Right? So you got 30 seconds because this is my video time, right? And I want to share this with you because you are my brother in recovery. Give 30 seconds advice to those that may be struggling yes. uh, and, and, and everything. Spit for me. Go ahead. All right. All right. I can spit. So 30 seconds back. Right. So um, the, best thing, the, the best thing I can say about recovery is that now I don't have to. Um, I can give my parents and my mom a peace of mind. They don't have to worry about me being out in the streets anymore. I don't have to look over my shoulders anymore and wonder who's following me. Nice. Um, I can now have hope again in my life where before I had no hope. Nice. Um, coming, coming closer to God has been a huge part of my recovery is, is forming a relationship with God, something that I didn't really have before. Um, and also my job and being able to help other people get their lives together is something that is a huge motivating factor in my life and something that I didn't even know that I possessed before I got into recovery was the the foundation of actually helping out another human being get through struggles is something I think that's a gift that I now have and I didn't even know that I had it yes. and it's helping me stay sober and recovery is just cool I mean it's not always fun and exciting like life once was but I mean you, you know what it's uh it's something that I'm going to have to grow through and learn and, and keep the struggle going. But, I mean, it, it's something that I love and something that I, that I hope I can continue to pass on the message and also to help myself at the same time. So, Dude, that was perfect. That was perfect, bro. <laughs> and we are live, and that's what makes us so great. Hey, this yeah, is... Well you know what? I'm just calling Julius to say, hey, can I go get my bike? I didn't know I'm going to be on like a live podcast, but I mean, you know what? With Julius, you never know what to expect with him. So, you know, I just found that I out tonight because I've never met for anything with, with him. So, dude, Real talk. This, this like does not shock me one bit that he's somewhere doing a live podcast with some people about recovery because that's told that's, that's him. But you know what? That's cool because that's another thing about being in recovery is you meet other people in recovery like Julius who, who's my brother I've only known him for six seven months but I feel like I've known him my whole life because we went through something together and I think that you that like the like bonds that you build when you're in recovery are something that are so real and solid 
yeah. compared to the bonds that I've made in my past that were built on drugs, faulty stuff, you know, women, fast money, all that stuff. Now I build relationships with real people about real things, right? Come on. So, yep. Dude, I feel Straight like I, I feel like I've known Julius forever too, man. His story's freaking rocking, and and it's so yeah. nice to be able to just hit record and listen to people talk. And so I, it's awesome to meet you. Hopefully, I will get to meet you face to face someday, brother. For sure, my man. Cool. For sure. All right. Hey, we're gonna get we're gonna get you on. You're gonna do your. We're gonna uh, link him up and have him to come out there and 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 and, and do one do one on you. That would be awesome. Well, have him come do one on me here at the at, 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 this, at, at the, the Salvation Army. Okay. Yeah, All you right. can go to the center and you can be inside of a center where there is yeah. recovery going on. Okay. Cool. It might not be yeah. tonight though. It might no. not be tonight. No, 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 yeah. no, no. He's gonna get on his bike and ride. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but it might. It will be definitely soon. We'll set it up. All right, for sure. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Later. So that's real. Now, right? now, that's let me real. show you something, right? That's Before so we awesome. did this, right? This is one thing I found in recovery. Like when I told you I got in that quiet space, God start talking to me. He started showing me things. He said, listen, when I speak to you, I need you to act immediately. Don't don't mash pause on it. Don't take your time. Move. Now, this whole setup that we're doing, right? This Because it's live. We wanted a live cut raw. God told me, bring it here. Right, right to to where we're sitting at. Let this light shine, right? Because because I'm gonna I'm gonna shed some light on this whole situation. I tried right? to appeal it. I'll and, be honest. Right? <laughs> everybody in the house, everybody in the house told me don't do it. I was don't like, well, we should do it in there. But this like, whole no. thing was set up, right? This whole thing. The phone come up because the, the phone. Listen, the, my phone would have been here. <laughs> Right. And I would have been in there and yeah. I would have never picked up the phone. That's a good point. Right. It was just wrong. And we wouldn't have got the phone. Right. Because it's, it's all the way in there and we, we're having it. Yeah. But I, when I there's saw a it, was, too. We there's a remember. gate. We, it, it's a lot of things going on right now. And this is what you got to remember, man, in recovery. Don't worry about what's going on. Stay focused on what you doing. Yep. Right. Because one, that's that, that I got off focus each and every time. Each and every time. And let me show you something. You remember the stuff that I told you I was addicted to? I don't, I ain't paid for nothing. Even, even these glasses. These are some nice glasses. Don't you see them? Yeah, I like stuff. So they, they 14 karat gold. They made in, um, somewhere, uh, somewhere <laughs> uh, Japan, right? Some Japan type stuff, right? Look, looked them up online. They like $1,200. Nice. What? It was given to me. I told somebody I didn't have my, no frames. They said, we got some frames over here. Somebody left some glasses. I literally went, grabbed those glasses, went and got a referral, and got the, the lenses put in there for free. Wow. Stuff comes when you Stuff start working recovery. Stuff comes when you start working recovery. <laughs> yeah. I needed a phone. Yeah. My birthday was coming up. Somebody in recovery said, I want to I wanna give you your birthday present. I said, what is it? They took me to T-Mobile. Gave me the phone. Bam. Bam. All right? <laughs> so I needed a car. Yeah. Let me show you something. I needed a car so I can, you know, I'm, I'm just a year and a half, right? I needed a car. The guy that we just got off the phone for, he said, listen, I have a car that I'm going to sell to you for $500. Nice. Go get the car. We got to bring it in the shop. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, hey, I'll walk this motherfucker out there too. <laughs> hey, look. Salvation oh. Army. Here we go again. Oh. And it's another guy in recovery, right? Do you want to do his story or should we close it off? What you want to do? Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. It's your video. It's a long ass video. <laughs> yeah, it is. Pretty, but how do we sign off? Well, this is how we sign off. <laughs> okay. What's your, your last bit of advice for people in recovery? My last bit of advice. I know for you say stay out your own way, and I love that. And I'm going to use that if that's cool with you. Or is that patent? <laughs> no, no, no. You can use that. Stay out your own way. Stay, that stay is, out of your own way. That's recovery. That is dude, important. That is so good. Well, you know what? He just, he asked me a question and gave me the answer. What was the question you just asked me? How do we sign off? Yeah. How do we sign off? What did you just say? Uh, stay out your own way. That's it. Nice. All right. I'm Johnny Ray. This is Four Addicts from Addicts. Subscribe on the bottom. Comment on the bottom. If you're interested, that's Shannon. If you're interested in doing your testimony with me, you can email me at fouraddictsfromaddicts at gmail.com. I'd love to hear your story. Your story matters. So, and uh, Shannon then bought me the car. <laughs> really? Yes.
We loaned him the money, yeah. <laughs> they bought me the car. That's nice. Well, well yeah, I got to pay the money back. That's, so, that's so awesome. I love a recovery. <laughs> We're having such a good time. I think you guys are going to go eat now. So yeah. uh, thank you for listening. And uh, that was awesome. So thanks, Stay guys. Stay talking, yep. Queenie. Cool. Love you, bro. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. There you go.